What's up, guys? I'm going to go into Microsoft Lists today, the difference between a SharePoint list and a Microsoft list, how they connect with one another, and how you can get started using this, and you know, one or two examples of how you can use them in the day-to-day -day as Microsoft is starting to trend away from some of the SharePoint only type of technology that it had seen in some of the legacy applications and more trending towards this 365 everything's an app type of view so that's what we're going over today if you haven't done so already please like and subscribe hit me with any questions in the comments below i'll make sure i get them answered for you guys and i'll see you on the other side all righty so Microsoft Lists. So before I get into sharing my screen, I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about what Microsoft Lists is and how it is different from a SharePoint list. I'll start with a SharePoint list. So Microsoft SharePoint in the legacy application had lists, libraries, uh, site, you know, they had different uh, components of script editor web parts and content editor web parts and lots of different things that you could do to kind of hard code the SharePoint environment and use lists as databases and libraries as databases. The connectivity to lists was a little limited to how you structured and architected your SharePoint environment, meaning you had to create these sub sites. So you had a parent site and then you had multiple sub sites underneath them in order for your lists to kind of talk to one another. So Microsoft said when they moved to 365, no more of that. We're not going to do that anymore. We are going to implement a flat architecture. And so from the flat architecture, they moved to hub sites, team sites, and communication sites. And it kind of opened up how you can communicate with lists. And from that, they kind of said, well, why are we even doing this with a SharePoint list anymore? Why don't we just make it its own app? And so SharePoint lists was born. And uh, it does take a lot of your SharePoint lists that you already have and drops them on this fun and fancy screen. So this is SharePoint lists. Now I'm in a demo environment, so a lot of these lists don't exist. So I will go in and let's just go ahead and create a SharePoint list first so that we know exactly where uh, all this stuff is stemming from. So I'm gonna go into this communication site and I'm going to go up. Uh, well, we could just do it right here. So there's two ways you can do it, right? You can hit new list or you can do up here and you can do a uh, site contents or add an app. Now, if I go to add an app, there is a, this is, does get a little frustrating for you legacy SharePoint people out there where you're going, okay, well, I wanna create a list. Where are my lists? So you have to go into the classic experience that's going to open up a new little window here, and this is where you can create a custom list, right? I don't recommend really doing it about that way. You can go about it that way. Uh, you can cer you know, you can certainly do it that way. There's the SharePoint store as well, where you're going to see a whole bunch of different apps, uh, featured items, all that fun stuff, right? So this is one way that you can create apps because they did start to move all of the uh, SharePoint uh, items as apps in as as we moved into 365. I did not mean to X out of that. So I will, uh, let's go back into SharePoint real quick and we will, uh, and we'll create a list using the dropdown. So I'll go back into the communication site and then from the communication site, I'll do the drop down, new list. So new list. Now, notice the difference between when I did through the legacy portal, it asked me a few different things. And then on this side of the house, it looks a lot different, right? So on this side of the house, it shows you more of the modern lists item where I can choose a template, I can choose from an Excel sheet, I can choose a couple of different things. Now, Let's take a look at side by side again of the legacy versus this new way of doing it. So this is the new way. And so I can do a blank list or I can do from a template. I can do a uh, issue tracker. It's going to show me some already pre-formatted 
JSON that's loaded in here. That's pretty cool. You got employee onboarding, you got event itinerary, asset manager. There's a lot of different ones in here. Let's do recipe tracker. Why not? Right? You got some images in here. Have you tried it before? Tags. So I can click use this template and then I'll say test, add a little description, uh, and then we'll go ahead and hit create. Now, I'm going to do one more and I'm going to do it through the legacy like I showed you initially where we go up and we do the gear and then we do add an app. And then from here I'll do the legacy uh, or the classic experience. So we'll click classic experience. It's going to load up eventually and then we'll choose a uh, custom list. Now this is going to look a lot uh, you know, this is what you think of when you think of SharePoint lists. So we'll say, we'll call this a uh, SharePoint list just so we can reference it um, in the SharePoint, uh, in the Microsoft list, we can, we can tell the difference. So here we see recipe tracker test, and then we also see SharePoint list under our site contents. If we go into Microsoft lists and I refresh it, we will start to see our SharePoint lists, at least one of them we see the recipe tracker because that is the only one of the lists that was created using the modern experience whereas the sharepoint list still it, since it was created with the classic experience still only lives in site content so that is one benefit to doing this is you have uh you have it here which why would i want to do this here is something really cool if we go up into new lists then we have from an existing list and if i wanted to replicate the communication site and I wanted to replicate the recipe tracker, I can. But also the SharePoint list is there too. But we already have the the templates that we were able to use from the modern experience and we can go ahead and hit next and then we can call this, you know, two and then add a new description, maybe change the color to purple. And then I can save it to either my list or I can jump into another site so I can uh, let's save it to the cultural, uh, what was it? Where am I, where am I saving it? Contoso cultural and economic fair. We'll hit save. And then now we have a duplicate of that list, at least the formatting that we can use to, uh, also grab their recipes. Maybe you wanted to separate it for whatever reason. So we can go back into lists. Let's go back to the homepage here and we should see the two. Yep. There they are. Again, we do not see the SharePoint list. We are not able to track that here. So that's a major, major difference. Whereas before, like we said, we can customize it, share, we can do all these fun things, right? So we can filter by recent lists I created, which is essentially going to be the same thing. So it's a way for you to organize your SharePoint lists as lists here in this application. Uh, you can kind of keep them all in one place. And so if you're working on them, you're a developer, it does help to see all of your lists in one place instead of jumping around where did i create this where does this live that sort of a thing now if you use the application itself microsoft lists let's go in and we're going to create a blank list and we're going to call this uh test well we'll call it microsoft list how about that so we can see where it came from add that we're going to choose burgundy this time we're going to use an airplane and we're going to save it to the communication site, which is where the SharePoint list is saved. We are then going to hit create. And now we will see it populate here in our Microsoft list. It is a blank custom list, so to speak, where we can add different columns. We could add a choice field, same as we would in SharePoint. And we can say, you know, choice. We'll add that and then we have the choices one, two, three, no default and we'll hit save. And so we have uh, amended uh, that. So let's go back into site contents now. We see SharePoint list, we see recipe tracker. I'll hit a quick refresh and we should see Microsoft list, which there she is. So now you do see the Microsoft list. We were able to use a template if we wanted. We chose not to, we chose to do blank. Uh, but it does also show up in Microsoft lists for ease of access. We can favorite it if it's something that we're working on. So really Microsoft lists 
is a modern way to organize your SharePoint lists environments, keep them all in one place. It's the part of this modern experience where a developer can easily access their data information. I can't tell you how many times as a SharePoint developer and working through SharePoint environments, I'm like, where the hell is that list? Where does it exist? I need to find it. And so instead of diving through site contents and using multiple clicks and trying to find it through subsites, you have it as easy as pie. You also have the ability to create the list through uh, importing through Excel. So if you go to add new list and you do from Excel, you're able to do that. Now, some GCC high environments, I know I'm going to get comments on this. Some GCC high environments and DOD do not have the ability to import from an Excel sheet. So just know that, guys. Sorry for, for all my military friends out there who are running SharePoint environments. But this is how you will use SharePoint lists. So I would highly suggest that from here forward, you start using it as SharePoint lists, either use the new dropdown or use uh, lists, the application, stop going into the site contents and going out of app classic experience, because eventually, as Microsoft starts to do more with Microsoft lists, instead of SharePoint lists, I know those are, they seem like the same thing, right? The more they add to these Microsoft lists, the, the classic experience is going to kind of dwindle a little bit. And if you did it a specific way, like we saw with SharePoint sites, remember we did SharePoint sites before and we started to build them out and we had that classic experience. And then all of a sudden it wasn't built the way we wanted it to. We couldn't add the cool functionality of the new heroes and all that other stuff. Think of that when you're starting to build out your SharePoint lists, build them as Microsoft lists instead so that if there are any new cool functionality that they roll out to lists, you don't lose that because you built it in a legacy format. So guys, I hope you got a lot out of this video. That is what Microsoft lists are. That's how you use it. And if you have any questions about this, hit it in the comments below. Feel free to like and subscribe so you guys see all of our newest videos on how to's and what are. Uh, as we'll start to do that as well. Make sure that you subscribe to our podcast, the Work Wherever podcast. We drop those podcasts every Monday. They're live on all of your listening platforms. We go over remote trends, Microsoft trends, and technology. And uh, we do some trivia. Have some fun on there, Sydney and I do. Those are available on Spotify, iTunes, wherever your podcasts are found. You can also watch them here on our YouTube channel in the playlist, Work Wherever podcast. You can also check them live in our Facebook community, if you search Go Work Wherever, you can join our private community and stay up with all the fun, ask us any questions, and, and communicate with other remote workers. So guys, thanks for hanging out. Until next time. Hey there. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications for all the latest videos from Capital Presence.